If you've just finished a custom guitar, it's more than likely a slightly odd shape, or in this case, a slightly odd length. 30 inch scale, a bit too short for a bass case, and a bit too long for a guitar case. So what are we gonna do about it? Well, we're gonna build something custom, of course. So firstly, we need to just make a frame, a box, usually rectangular. I've gone for a slightly tapered look on this occasion. I would love to have used some pine to match this guitar body perfectly. However, when you usually work with strips of pine this kind of thickness, they have a nasty habit of warping and twisting and ruining the stuff that you're doing, even when you cut really accurately. Ask me how I know. So my favourite material is some decent plywood, cut it down so it's the correct sizes, measure up how big your box needs to be for your guitar. Literally, I laid this down on a strip of paper, drew round it, and these are the dimensions that I've come up with. If you are going to do an angled cut like this, may I recommend gluing it first and then putting the screws in afterwards. And to hold it in place while the wood glue sets, just put a couple of dabs of super glue inside there. Hold it for a 10 seconds or so and it sets really nicely. Once the wood glue has then set, then go in, pre-drill, put your screws in and then cap that. With an angled cut, quite often if you try and go in straight away with the screw, when it tightens up, it pulls things and slants them over so nothing's in line anymore. Again, ask me how I know. And even with the doweling, we're starting to customise already. This technique with the little black ring around it using some black superglue is exactly the same technique I used to put the fret markers on the top of the neck. At this moment, it's worth pointing out that this is the box and the lid all in one go. So what I'm going to end up doing is cutting probably about an inch or so down from there all the way around to create that separate box and lid that's going to do that. So I know that it's all exactly the same size. Now, speaking of bottoms and lids, what are we going to use for that? Well, the trusty old plywood again. Even when it's relatively thin, it's still pretty sturdy. And if you leave it wood coloured, looks really nice. So now it's nasty router time to put a recess all the way along there in the hopes that we can just slot in the plywood top and bottom. Right, so with that cut out, and all I've done is run a plane along the edge just to make sure it's nice and flat. Um, you can see that at some point as I slide that way, it fits beautifully in between those little recesses. That's absolutely gorgeous. So all I've got to do now is take a marking knife and just mark the end of that bit there. And with that side fitting beautifully, we just need to do the same at this end, again just to trim from that edge to the equivalent on that side. And with that, we have a perfect fit. Actually, significantly easier than doing a rectangular box. Do sloping, it's great. But before we glue that in, we've got some extra customization to do. So we're heading back to the laser machine. We're gonna put the 12th fret inlay in a different kind of style, but effectively the same thing onto the front. We're also going to put some lines for road markings on there as well. And just as a little preview of what's inside the box, we're going to have this little piece of scripture that explains the entire design of what you're going to see when you open that lid. Now, before I actually go into there with the resin and a little bit of gold leaf inside the crown as well, I am going to glue it all together purely as a way of time management that that can be setting while I work on the resin stuff and I've got less wasted time in here.
So that's the relatively simple bit done. A thin layer of resin, UV to cure, and the gold leaf sticks to it perfectly. Now, I'm then going to fill all of these burnt sections, literally one ply layer thick, just to fill that with the resin. So you just get a shine out of all of that that's been laser cut out. And the less sanding I need to do on this plywood sheet, the better. Before we chop this box in half with a nice big saw, there's one more bit of customising that we need to do, and that is to set it on fire. No, obviously we're not actually going to set it on fire, but what we are going to do is scorch the outsides in the same kind of areas as we've done on the guitar. Again, just to make this one nice wholesome piece that guitar and case is all included together. Once it's scorched all the way around, again, just rubbed it over with the lashings of Danish oil, let that cure and you've got a nice protected surface. Now we can chop it in half. First, scribe a line so it's nice and equal all the way around all four sides and then just very carefully go through with a saw. Yes, you can do this with a table saw if you have one or a handheld circular saw I've done in the past but a little bit scary and if it kicks and jumps that's the entire lot done. So I just like a nice, I like a Japanese pull saw actually, they're really really good for this kind of stuff. So just take your time, saw through, keep on that line all the way around and then it'll just need a very light planing around the edge just to make it neat and tidy and nice and smooth again. Last thing I'm going to do before we line the inside is to make a handle. Now let's literally just draw around the width of a hand. I've got big hands so that should fit everybody. Uh, and then just create the, the thickness, the shape that we fancy on this decent chunk of oak, nice and strong. Really simple to just cut that out on the bandsaw, smooth it off with a bit of sanding. And then I like to use these self-threaded inserts to clamp it in so I don't need nasty bolts on the inside of the box. So we have currently made a very attractive box. Doesn't really protect the guitar as is though, does it? It sits inside very nicely, the lid closes as it does, but well, you can't leave it bare like that, can you? So after a quick vacuuming, we'll go at it and line the insides first, then we'll put all the cushions in to make sure that it's all snug as a bug in a rug, in a case, as a guitar, with no bugs. So here I've got some of this uh, kind of crushed velvet stuff which is going to be lining uh, the base and the lid as well but I'm also just going to put a, a thin layer of this kind of fleecy stuff just where the body's going to sit as an extra bit of a cushion down where the body end is. So I'm just going to be using some spray adhesive carpet glue type stuff uh, just needs A little bit across it, leave it for a few seconds, and then lay it down. Yeah, make sure there's no creases in there, and that's going to be enough for the body to just have an extra little bit of comfort underneath the lining. There we go. Right, so laying that in quite loosely with a lot of overlap. I'm then going to trim off. So again, there's loads to play with, and then we can think about gluing that in.
after I've stuck both sides, I still haven't stuck the end section yet because I need to figure out what's going to happen at this corner point. We need to make sure that this is neat and tidily folded. Uh, you can see that that is glued on that side, but that isn't. So it's just a matter of trying to cut in close so that you can fold it over and make it neat and tidy. And I'm pretty sure I do this different every single time I make a box. Uh, do whatever works, try and figure it out. Where's the fold wanting to go? And if you can do what the fabric wants to do, all the better in my opinion. So with a little bit of cutting, sticking, folding, we can get the corners to look fairly neat and tidy. So now it's about trimming this edge off. So I'm going to use a fresh Stanley blade to actually trim all the way along here. There we go. So that's trimmed. We'll get to really tidy up the, the very edge, which is always a little bit tricky. But now we need to make sure that the guitar isn't going to move inside the case. So that's it's nice and soft for it. But we now need to put in some sections some supports around the edges so that once it's in, it's in and not going to slide around. And for that, I use an old bodyboard. Polystyrene, as it were. So I like to do a corner here and a corner there, leaving space for the strap button. And I found the best thing to cut polystyrene is just a bread knife. So now that all of those bits of polystyrene are cut out, all I'm going to do is wrap them with the same material that we've lined the case with and then glue those in in place. So with all of the internals in place, the guitar slots in very comfortably, sits there, it's nice and secure, it's not going to go anywhere. I've lined the lid exactly the same way as I did that first initial lining in the box. So of course the next task is to actually join these two pieces together. And that's just going to be the simple task of using one of these piano hinges, it's a meter long so fits really perfectly. Just being very careful to make sure everything's aligned correctly. Now, another essential item is a strap for the lid so that it doesn't just open out all the way through. It's supported, it can sit upright once you open it. Really simple, just get some webbing, uh, fold it over at the ends to make it doubly thick, and then screw it on, making sure you use a nice big washer so that's not going to pull strip. And then the lid will sit at exactly the angle that you set it. So just trimming with a very sharp knife and a ruler and then a really light scorching with a blowtorch to give us that nice clean edge all the way along just to finish that off. Little bits of foam I'm going to stick on in relevant places. So one on there and then one kind of around there to cover the bridge area so that when the lid closes that would be pushing down on there to make sure that nothing's going to move at all. And last but not least, we're going to make sure that obviously it's going to clasp shut. So a few little suitcase clasps, easy enough to find, to just screw in place. And with that, we have a finished custom guitar case that beautifully matches the custom guitar inside.